So we are going to prove that in a principal ideal domain, every non-zero prime ideal is maximal. So let's suppose we have some ring that's a PID, and then we have some P in R, which is a non-zero prime ideal. Our goal is to show that therefore P is maximal. So let's take a look at what the definition of a maximal ideal is, and then we can go from there. To say that P is maximal is to say that if we have some ideal J, which contains P, then either J is equal to P or J is equal to the entire ring R. So let's suppose we have this ideal J, which contains P. We know that both P and J are principal ideals because we're in a PID. So P, this prime ideal right here, is going to be generated by some element of the ring, and J is also going to be generated by some element of the ring. Now to say that P, the prime ideal generated by P, is a subset of J, is exactly to say that the element P is a multiple of J. So P is equal to R times J. And this is because the ideal generated by P is exactly the set of all multiples of P. So if P is a multiple of J, every multiple of P is also a multiple of J. So every element in the set of multiples of P will also be in the set of multiples of J, so we get the subset relation that we want. Now this equation right here is very useful for us because we know, of course, the element P is in our prime ideal, and therefore Rj is an element of our prime ideal P. Now because P is prime, that means either R is in P or J is in P. So let's take a look at each of these two cases. First of all, let's suppose that J is in P. In that case, we know that the ideal generated by J is going to be a subset of P. Because we know that J is in P, and since ideals are closed under multiplication, this is the set of all multiples of J, all of those are still going to be in P. So this ideal, J, is a subset of P. But we assumed at the beginning that P was a subset of J. So if P is a subset of J, and J is also a subset of P, then we get J equals P. So that is our first possibility here, which means this case satisfies the condition for a maximal ideal. Now let's look at the other case over here. Suppose that R is in P. In that case, we know that P, this ideal here, is generated by the element P in the ring. And therefore, if R is in this ideal, R has to be a multiple of P. So this means that R is equal to some element S times P. Now let's take this equation and bring it back to the equation that we have over here. We know that P equals R times J. And we can substitute this in here. This is equal to SP times J. We've just substituted this in for R. Now from here, notice that we have P equals SPJ. And we have a cancellation rule because we're in a PID. In particular, we're in an integral domain. So we know that we can cancel factors on both sides of an equation as long as they're not zero. And we said that P was a non-zero prime ideal, which means we know that this element P is not equal to zero, so we can cancel it in our equation. And if we do that, on the left side, if we cancel out a P, we're just going to be left with a 1. And on the other side, we cancel out the P, we're left with S times J. So this equation here is telling us that 1 is a multiple of J. In particular, this means that 1 is an element of the ideal generated by J. But we know that ideals are closed under multiplication. For any other element of the ring, say we call it T, we can always write T as T times 1. So if 1 is in the ideal generated by J, then every other element of the ring is also in that ideal. And that's only possible if J is equal to the entire ring. 
So in the case that we have R in P, we get J equal to the entire ring, and that is the other possibility for the condition of a maximal ideal, and therefore we've satisfied both cases. So we've shown that in a principal ideal domain, if P is some non-zero prime ideal, then if P is a subset of another ideal J, either J equals P or J equals R, and therefore every non-zero prime ideal is maximal.